Have you ever considered that an automotive engineer has to make a vehicle not only operate efficiently, be visually appealing and cost effective, but also be destructible? Safety of drivers and passengers is important because we all know accidents happen. In fact, approximately 1.3 million people die every year from car crashes and another 20 to 50 million are injured during these crashes. However, research has shown that even though we drive significantly more than we did 60 years ago, the numbers of deaths are down four and a half times. This can largely be attributed to safety features such as airbags and seat belts. But Another safety feature that many early car designers did not agree with is crumple zones. In other words, parts of the car that smashed down like an accordion during a crash. It was once thought it was better to minimize the deformation of a car during an accident. Today, some people still tend to think that these older tank-like cars were better built and are actually safer than the cars on the market now. However, this is just not the case. Rather, engineers deliberately design cars with crumple zones to manage the kinetic energy generated during a car crash. Let's give some perspective on energy generating during these car crashes. If we crash a Tesla Model S 75, weighing in at 4400 pounds and traveling at 60 miles per hour into a concrete wall, energy generated would be equivalent of dropping the car off a 131 foot building onto a concrete surface. Whenever we are in car crashes, we are subject to these huge amounts of energies. While the human body can withstand incredible amounts of energy, there are limits. As you can imagine, not many living things could survive a 131 foot fall in a Tesla. Engineers understand this and want to direct as much energy away from people in a car crash as possible. To do this, they often design cars using three zones. The front crumple zone, passenger compartment or safety cell, and the rear crumple zone. The basic idea of crumple zone safety is to design the front and rear parts to have a controlled deformation in a crash to absorb or dissipate as much energy as possible. This will help decelerate the car and those inside. Thus, when the crash energy, also called the crash pulse, reaches passengers, it will be within human tolerance level and things like seat belts will work better. Decreasing the effects of rapid acceleration by a factor of even a few tenths of a second through crumple zones, you can reduce energy force by that much on the human body. Because remember, force equals mass times acceleration. As you might have already realized, in many accidents, the passenger compartment remains relatively intact. This is because of the reinforced body of this compartment with higher strength steel to retain its original structure as much as possible. This helps protect damage to the head and torso. You can see from the schematic from Volvo about the types of steel and other metals used to design a car. It is even more impressive that engineers try to make a car safe for all sorts of collisions. For example, people might hit another car or even multiple multiple cars or a stationary object like a light pole. Accidents can occur from the front, side, back or the car may even roll. Engineers even consider the safety of pedestrians in the car design. Another idea about car safety that may be contrary to public opinion, although cars are still made with steel, steel is not necessarily the strongest material available. Race cars travel fast and often have higher stakes that may result in crashes. However, many of these drivers are able to walk away. One reason is that plastic, yes, plastic is used to build the frame of the car. More specifically, carbon fiber, which is usually reinforced with plastic. This is four times lighter than steel, but 10 times stronger. At the end of the day, we can all be thankful that our car crumples in a crash and other safety features like your engine dropping under your cabin now exist. Cars available today are safer and are in fact built better than earlier days and will only improve with time. Although, it is hard to argue with the style from those earlier days. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you'd like to support our YouTube adventure, 
please consider donating on Patreon. Thank you for watching and see you next time.